Joining me to discuss this and the background to this particular case and others similar is Wayne Burrows, who's chairperson of the Black Ribbon Movement. Uh, welcome to the show, Wayne. Uh, good morning to you. Uh, kia ora, Michael. How are you? I'm very well. Thanks. Yeah. Just Thanks to for having me. Well, listen, yeah. just to explain to our listeners, what is Black Ribbon, please? Okay, yeah. Um, so Black Ribbon is, we're an advocacy, uh, well, advocacy, we advocate um, for or against um, family violence, and we uh, try and do that without a gender bias. So we are, well, willing to acknowledge that both men and women, um, and, and possibly even some young people, can um, commit violence, violent acts against their partners, their their elders, their children, um, and yeah, we think that it should be treated equally, whoever the perpetrator is and whoever the victim is. So your argument is that you should be not only colour and culture blind when you're judging people for the crimes they've committed, but also gender neutral as well. Uh, yeah, I didn't mention colour and culture, but certainly that's the case for us. We we hold no biases, or try to hold no biases. I mean, everyone holds some biases, but um, you. Know, and and we think that the um, objective data um, supports a gender symmetry um, in perpetrators of violence. Um, there's been um, in New Zealand, out of Otago University, with. Uh, world famous cohort study that you've probably heard of yes. where they track track people for 40 or so years yeah. and it's lauded the world over as a groundbreaking study but um their findings on um domestic violence uh are pretty much ignored um when when these people were in their early 20s they were um uh surveyed for the sort of violence that they'd committed against um, intimate partners and it came out that the women both had committed more um, violence so they'd acknowledged that they'd committed it but also that men had men acknowledged that they'd been victims more often than the than the woman um, in that survey and the world over there have been many um, surveys of a similar nature professor um, Murray Strauss, a well-known, now deceased um, uh, uh, researcher from the United States, um, he wrote a paper about just over 10 years ago, which was um, complaining about why the gender symmetry in family violence has been ignored for the last 30 years, so 40 years now, and uh, yeah. Right. So, that, so, so in essence, the argument is that a partner violence. I think they call it intimate partner violence um, or violence against children. Um, there may well be um, those who are prosecuted may well be more male than female, but what you're suggesting is that this longitudinal study from Otago University um, suggests that um, the genders are relatively equal in the, in the violence they meet out, yeah? Yeah, uh, and our view though is really it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether the genders are equal or not, but um, that whoever commits the violence, it should be treated uh, equally. And in terms of the case that you um, just highlighted, which even though it's in the media, I hadn't personally been familiar with, but my view has always been that when it's a child that's the victim of this, that they should be protected more, not less because they are much more vulnerable. If if someone attacks you or I, we've got a chance of defending ourselves, but some poor innocent child has no chance. And so I, I think that's a much more heinous crime myself than... Um, I agree. So what you're saying to me is that the, the way in which infanticide law is structured at the moment under the Crimes Act, um, yeah. it really, it devalues the lives of, of children if, or particularly infants, if they are murdered by their mothers. Absolutely, and uh, what you didn't highlight is that the infanticide 
crime, which is the lower uh, lower scale uh, offence, when um, when a child is murdered, is only available for a woman. I've, uh, while yes. I was listening to you, I brought, yeah. I brought up the Crimes Act and infanticide. It says where a woman causes the death of any child of hers under the age of 10 years in a manner that amounts to culpable homicide. So uh, this lessened penalty is something that is only available for, for women and it is only available for women who... Uh, kill the most vulnerable in our society, or well, some of the most vulnerable, mm. certainly other, other people, some adults that are also very vulnerable. So t- take me to the next, then, the logic le- uh, stance. Um, the, do you see an institutional bias against men, um, not just in terms of domestic violence, but also in terms of the way in which the judicial system responds to domestic violence? Is, do you think that the police view men hitting women as worse than women hitting men? Uh, Yeah, I I wrote an article um, I think back in about 2015 and one of the examples that I put in that article was something that was highlighted on uh, Police 10-7 on the television which was a family violence situation and um, they showed the police arriving at the house and the woman was sitting on the front doorstep having a fag and a, a female police officer stopped with her and two male officers went round the back of the house and came into the house. And the show showed the interaction with the police officer and the woman on the steps and her account of what had happened, she said she had come home drunk and the two people had started pushing each other in uh, which obviously is not a ideal situation but she said in her um in her account of what happened he tried to walk away and i kept going at him and the outcome of this though was that the police took the man away in handcuffs mm. when there had been some sort of minor mutual pushing disagreement yeah that, yeah. involved some pushing and shoving yeah. and he, he had tried to retreat from that, get out of the situation and she wouldn't let him mm. Mm. and he was the one that was and the the whole uh, uh, the protection order type scenario what happens is the police are encouraged to make one person the perpetrator and another person the victim and again, going back to objective studies, some of this, so some, a study out of Harvard University, for example, found that in these situations, around 50% of the time, the violence is mutual. Mm. And yet our system labels one person the perpetrator and another the victim. And it usually is the man. I mean, if you look at the protection order statistics, I don't know them off the top of my head, but they are heavily weighted in favour of uh, orders being made against men rather than women, and yet, you know, this to me this was the situ- this was a situation that the police wanted to highlight by putting it on television, and yet it was far from clear cut. Uh, well, it was it, it showed to me a, a, a clear gender bias that occurred with the police by now, taking the yeah. The other thing is that um, continually, I think there was a, a good example of it last week. A whole series of Mongol mob members got on a bike in Hawke's Bay and decided to blat off in support of the White Ribbon movement. Um, uh-huh. But uh, the White Ribbon get an awful lot of... Uh, you'd only describe it as sympathetic, almost fawning media coverage. Um, and they've got ambassadors and a whole lot of nonsense like that. They got very upset at me once when I wrote an article about them being a bunch of hypocrites, basically. But do you have any contact with White Ribbon at all? Uh, in a way, we are counter to White Ribbon because we don't agree with their, um, their, their gender bias that they put on things. Personally, I have been along to some White Ribbon events, um, but I've done that in a personal capacity uh, just because I like to be informed about uh, what, what's actually going on, what people are saying. Uh, and and I, I don't like the, 
the way that they portray this issue um, as something that's predominantly done by men against women, which is, you know, if we if you think back, if you remember uh, when David Cunliffe was uh, leader of the Labour Party, oh, yes, that's right. Mm. He stood up and apologised for being uh, a man, a, man yeah. a woman's refuge um, meeting. And this was, you know, th to be informed, uh, I was actually at that meeting uh, and sitting about three rows back could, could see the white of his eyes while he was telling everyone that he apologised for his gender. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that was the end of him, basically, but oh, well. Um, <laughs> sure. Now, I also see that White Ribbon... Um, do they want boys to be girls? Um, because it also seems that they've moved beyond just beating, you know, having a go at men who beat women up. But they've actually um, come out with a, a list of what boys should and shouldn't do when they're kids. Um, now, they, in fact, uh, argue, they talk about stereotypical gender roles um, hmm. and uh, that we need to change the script. Do you think they've got a, um, a political agenda that's a lot more than just a bit about domestic violence? Well, I can't speak for exactly what they stand for, but it seems to me from the outside looking in that they are heavily influenced by a feminist ideology um, that I see as, as being uh, anti-male. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I personally think Well, that's how they started, should... actual fact. It started as a, a bunch of Canadian feminists getting upset because one man went mad and killed a couple yeah. of women. And suddenly yeah. the White Ribbon movement came out of that. Well, you know, suddenly, um, yeah, it, it was one nasty, despicable, psychotic individual who I think murdered two women. And suddenly yeah. out of that came this all men are violent creatures argument. And there, there certainly is um, a different reaction and from the public when a woman is killed by a man than when a man is killed by a woman. And yeah. to highlight that, one of the things that I've talked about amongst our group, for example, is um, almost no one would know the name Dale Watani. Now, Dale Watney was killed within yes. six months or yeah. so of another murder where everyone knows the name of the victim, Grace Mullane. And, you know, Grace was taken away and buried in a shallow grave in a forest. And Dale Watney was taken away and buried in a shallow grave in a forest. And yet we have a, a public outrage at one of those crimes and almost nothing said about the other one, and it seems obvious to me that that is an entirely based on the gender of the of the victim and the gender of the perpetrator. I mean, Dale was uh, killed by his female mm, partner. partner That's or, right. Yeah. yeah, and she was a violent woman, and she'd been a violent woman for much of her life, uh, and, and and got away with it essentially. That's right, um, and but. So the, the the facts of the case, if you take away the genders, are very very similar. Mm. Um, one one was a partner, the other one was a casual um, meet up. Um, that's probably the biggest difference, aside from gender, um, in those two cases. And yet, I mean, I, I think the public should be outraged when people are killed, but we we have a um, societal um, standard where we get outraged when women are treated badly but not when men are treated badly. No, I agree with you. Um, listen, I think you do God's work, Wayne. All power to you. Um, just to give you some sort of firmer, just though, White Ribbon have um, put out what they call a pledge. I yes. guess you're aware of that. Um, yes. And the first, um, and when you take the pledge, so you, you, you actually have to take the pledge, and it, it, I'll read it to you. White Ribbon supports men to commit to taking at least one of these eight actions to show their respect. They are the right thing to do, and when you take the pledge, we will send you information on how to build these into your life. And the first pledge, the first bullet point is listening and believing women. 
Uh, that's yes. Bad, uh, it was bad English. It should be listening to and believing women. But I, I'm, you're just sitting there going, oh, my God, so I should believe you automatically because you're a woman. Uh, that seems to be the way, and I think there's uh, some of that that happens within the justice system as well. Um, that, um, And I think that's a standard that's also... Um, that's what the police do, though, isn't it? Yeah. By Women Huge and, and, and other organisations like that where, um, yeah, as soon as an allegation is made then against a man, then the man is... Um, treated as if he's guilty uh, mm. from the beginning. I like the last one. It says, um, talk to a young man about breaking out of the man box, whatever the man box might be. But it does seem that the, in many ways they are seeking to feminise young boys. Um, and I would have thought our primary schools are doing a bad enough job of that already, but there you go. Yeah, I... My view, we should be highlighting our differences and but also allowing people to express themselves how they want, but certainly shouldn't be pushing them uh, in one direction or another. I would agree with you. Wayne, thank you very much for joining us uh, and uh, all, all, all power to you. Um, Wayne is the chairperson of the Black Ribbon Movement. Yes, it's absolutely antithesis of the White Ribbon Movement. You will hear the white, the Black Ribbon Movement not covered by the mainstream media at all. 